This is Spider Sonic 3.0. We take a boatload of electronic music equipment, laptops, synths, drum machines, put them in a room, invite a bunch of musicians, compose, improvise, perform, and record. I'm Trevor. I'll be the facilitator hosting Spider Sonic 3.0. That's me. This iteration of Spider Sonic is part of the Initiative for Digital Exploration of the Arts and Sciences, which will be held at the CalIT2 Performative Computing Lab on May 23rd. We're going to have around 16 computers, and what I'd like to show you now is how they communicate MIDI, synchronization, and audio for mixing in with the synths, drum machines, and other audio. We use a centralized mixed host running Ableton and sending synchronization data off to the laptops. Audio is received over jack trip from software such as Reactor, Max, PD, Machina, Contact, whatever. Here's the server. I keep everything I need in a SpiderSonic folder on the desktop. First thing I'm going to do is run audio MIDI setup by double clicking or in my case, I'm just gonna type it into a terminal window. From there, I run the network MIDI configuration and I'm going to check for my machine on the network. I have a laptop that's named M1. I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. I could connect to multiple laptops at the same time if I were setting up the whole room, but in this case, I'm just going to test with one laptop. Go ahead and connect. Next, I'll fire up QJactyl. This allows me to control Jack and make connections between JackTrip and other audio components. I'm going to double check the settings to make sure that my buffer is 512 and that I'm running at 48K. And then I'm going to go ahead and start Jack. Once Jack is started, I can go ahead and fire up my audio software. In this case, I'm going to use Ableton Live 9 because it gives me the capability of 16 ins and outs that are accessible through Jack. Other software such as Logic only gives me eight channels and I want a little more. I'll go ahead and check the live preferences to make sure that my audio device is set for the jack router. Notice 16 ins and 16 outs. I'm going to check the MIDI settings and making sure that the network audio is turned on. That is, I'm sending synchronization out of Ableton off to the remote clients. I'm going to check my input and output configuration to make sure that those are enabled, which gives me the option to select those within Ableton. I don't need any MIDI in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that track. Then I'm going to add 15 audio tracks for a total of 16 inputs. I'll go ahead and assign the inputs to 1, 2, 3, all the way up through 16. This system will give me the capability of recording 16 inputs. Some might be stereo, some might be mono, some maybe four or five channels, whatever via jack. It also gives me the capability of providing a mix that can be sent to outputs for the audience. Again, mono, stereo, 5.1, whatever. For now, I'm just going to record my higher channels, starting at channel 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm also going to set the input monitor to auto so when I'm recording, I can hear what I'm recording. I'm going to check my cue output. Ableton allows me to cue through a separate output, like a DJ mixer, by clicking the solo cue button. This gives me the capability of cueing a single channel, which is nice if I want to do a DJ style mix. Once Ableton Live is set up, I can go ahead and fire off my script, which opens up a series of jack trip connections on different ports. One script does everything for me. I'm going to check my QJactyl connections. First, disconnect everything. I don't want any feedback. Then I'm going to go ahead and open up Remote Desktop and Remote into one of the clients. Easier than walking across the room. Again, I have a SpiderSonic folder on the desktop with everything I need. I'm going to go ahead and open up Audio MIDI Setup and double check and see how things are. Then I'm going to open up QJactyl. Check my settings, 512 and 48K again, and I'll go ahead and start Jack. Once Jack is started, I can open up my audio application. In this case, I'm going to fire up Reactor, 
And I'm going to check reactors preferences to make sure that my audio settings are set up properly. Reactor provides routing to turn on and off inputs and outputs. I've gone ahead and disabled everything above channel 4 just to make jack a little bit cleaner. Inputs, eh, I'll leave them as they are for right now. MIDI, I need to make sure that my network MIDI port is turned on. This will give me the capability of receiving MIDI timecode. I'm going to fire up a groove box. In this case, I'm using Sign Beats, a slightly modified version uh, that works a little better for me. It's basically a four oscillator groove box. I go ahead and fire up Jack Trip, and then I'm going to make my connections. I just want to send one channel, but I want to mix my left and right into one channel. Jack Trip allows me to do this, so I'm sending channels 1 and 2 to Jack Trip, and I'm sending 3 and 4 just to the local outputs that I'm going to use for headphone monitoring. I'll go back to the mix host, and I'll make my connections on the host. I'm receiving from this Jack Trip item called Jack Trip 18, and I'm going to patch that into Ableton Live input number 8. And then I'm going to patch the output of Ableton Live, all the channels. I'll just patch that right through to the system output. That's the speakers. And I do need to bring up one more item. I'm going to check the preferences one last time to make sure that all three of these boxes are checked to ensure that MIDI start and stop, that is transport control, is sent to the client. Because my mix host is sending MIDI timecode and MIDI start and stop commands, I can use the transport in the mix host to trigger my reactor session on the client. I'm going to go ahead and record, see what happens. I'm getting some input on channel 8. I can also adjust the tempo in real time, which is really nice. Maybe I want to raise the size of the fader so I can see things a little better. And I can switch into arrangement view to see how my recording session is doing. You'll notice that my higher channels aren't receiving much signal, but channel 8 is definitely receiving something. I'm going to go ahead and let this record for a little while. While I'm recording, I could change the tempo, I could tap tempo. If I stop, then that's going to send a MIDI transport stop code to the client and they will also stop. When I'm done with the session, it's best to quit out of the main application. That is, generally you'd quit out of Ableton and Reactor and Max and PD first, then go into JackTrip, close all the connections, and quit. So there we go, SpiderSonic 3.0, open to the public on May 23rd from 2 o'clock until 6 o'clock. We're going to jam for about 45 minutes, talk about technology for about 10 or 15, People will be showing up with their patches, their own laptops, their own synths, and hopefully we get a really fantastic recording. Check us out, spidersonic.org.